Dehancer is an incredibly powerful film emulation plugin with more than 60 different film stocks to choose from and true film characteristics like bloom, halation and grain. If you want to take your color grading workflow to the next level and your goal is to work smarter, not harder, then this video may be for you. Just a quick disclaimer before I start the video, Dehancer did reach out to me to ask if I would test the plugin. However, I'm not obliged to say anything that I don't want to say. I'm going to give both the pros and the cons that I found whilst using it. And this video will be broken down into two segments. One will be my workflow within DaVinci Resolve. And the second will be an outro where I discuss those pros and cons and also talk about who I think this plugin is intended for. Once you've opened up your software of choice, which for me, I work with in DaVinci Resolve just because it gives me the most flexibility with color. However, Dehancer is available for Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. You want to head over to your project settings, head over to the color management tab, and we're going to select DaVinci YRGB. Our timeline color space is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut Slash Intermediate, and our output color space depends on the computer that you're using. So I'm using a MacBook, which means that I'm gonna select Rec. 7 and 9A as that displays the colors correctly on Mac. However, if you're using a Windows PC, Rec. 7 and 9 Gamma 2.4 will be the best option. Once you've saved that, you're ready to go and start the node tree. So our node tree is gonna consist of six nodes, which we'll create by pressing Alt S six times. I like to label all of my nodes personally just to keep everything organized. Okay, it looks like I've created an extra node for no reason, so let's get rid of that. Now that I've labeled all my nodes, I'll just quickly tell you what each of them are for. So our first one is gonna be our color space transform, which we'll go ahead and apply now. And within the color space transform, you wanna select your camera's color space and gamma. For me, this was shot on the RE Alexa XT Plus, so we're going to pick RE Wide Gamut 3 and RE Log C3. Our output color space is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut, and our output gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. Then we're going to head over to the final node and we're going to convert this back into Rec. 7 and 9 with another color space transform selecting our input color space to DaVinci Wide Gamma and our input gamma to DaVinci Intermediate. Our output color space is going to be Rec. 709 and our output gamma will be Gamma 2.4. So now all the nodes that we have in here to make our adjustments are all going to take place within the DaVinci Wide Gamma and DaVinci Intermediate color space. Um, we picked this color space because it gives us the most flexibility with color possible. Our second node is for white balance. Now white balance is incredibly important and is probably the most important thing in this workflow is white balancing your footage correctly to begin with. Because if you don't white balance correctly, Dehancer is gonna be a massive pain to use um, and you're not gonna be happy with the results that you get. I like to use the white balance picker down here and we're gonna pick uh, the whitest area of our image possible, which is going to be one of the brightest highlights on his back. So that, that adjusts the image pretty nicely. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I may make a couple more tweaks using the temp and tint. Um, however, sometimes in your image, you're not going to always have something super white. So you may just have to go in here and adjust it manually. Now we have a nice clean starting point. We can go ahead and drag in Dehancer onto our Dehancer node. Immediately when you put Dehancer on your image, you're gonna notice that the colors are very off and the grain is also quite intense, um, but we're gonna sort that out. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is holding Option or Alt and clicking on one of these drop-down arrows here. This is just gonna close all of the tabs together because by default they're open um, and sometimes that's just it's just a little bit too much clutter for my liking, especially when you're new to the plugin, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So we're just gonna hit that so that we're looking at a nice um, an easy sort of layout. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open our input section and we're gonna select our source to DaVinci Wide Gamut Slash Intermediate. Now I think this is probably a good point for me to say that this 
workflow is what works for me, but by no means is it the right workflow or the only workflow. I strongly suggest that you go out there, look for some tutorials, but also most importantly, play around in this plugin yourself, push and pull the sliders and sort of just get really familiar with what the sliders actually do and how they affect your image. So I'm gonna use these color space transforms within DaVinci, but Dehancer does also offer the ability to be able to choose your own camera, which is something that um, I need to explore more myself. So we're gonna select DaVinci wide camera slash intermediate as our source. And our next step is to come down to the print section. Before we come down to the print section, we're just gonna disable the film for now, just so that we've got the clean image to start with. Within the print, you've got a few different profiles to pick from. The Kodak 2383 print film is that sort of classic Hollywood look that you get on a lot of high-end films. This gives you that classic sort of um, high contrast, very punchy look. For this specific clip though, I'm gonna go with Kodak Enduro glossy papers. I think it fits the scene a little bit better and we're gonna try and make this scene a little darker and a little grungier. So first thing we wanna do is enable the analog range limiter this just helps to simulate the range that actual film has. The second thing I like to do is I usually like a lot of color density in my image. So I like to bring that up to max. You can't see it yet because the film stock has not been enabled. So we're gonna go and head over to that next. Just before we head over to the film stock though, we want to start dialing in our contrast and setting our black and white points. So using the tonal contrast, we're gonna adjust this to our liking. This image is supposed to be quite high contrast, so I'm gonna lean more into that. I'm quite liking somewhere around 17. Again, I'm using my waveform down here to make sure that I'm doing that accurately. If your waveform doesn't look like mine and maybe the image is a little grayed out for some reason, I don't know if anyone else gets that, but I get it a lot when I'm working. You just wanna click on this uh, slider adjustment tool in the bottom and click reset view, and that should bring your waveform to looking like mine. Once we open the expand section, we wanna adjust our black point and white point. I like to adjust my black point so it's just touching zero, but not any over so that we end up crushing the blacks. You can crush the blacks, but um, you just need to know what you're doing and if there's a specific look that you're going for. With our white point, we wanna bring that up so that it's just touching 896. This is so that we don't end up clipping any of our information. And now we have a really good range, a high dynamic range in our image. Next up, we have film compression. By enabling film compression, we're simulating essentially what film does. Film has a lot of creamy highlights. It has this roll off that's really nice and subtle. If your image is already well exposed, then usually the settings should be just fine. However, if your exposure is a bit off, feel free to go in and mess around yourself. Next, we'll select the film stock that we want to use. So for this image, I'm actually referencing another image my director sent me, um, and that was shot on Kodak 250D, so we're going to go with that. The push and pull slider is based off the real push and pull in the film process. However, kind of for me, it acts more as just sort of um, adjusting the colors to where I want them, and then we can kind of go and changed the overall exposure of the image after. So I'm kind of looking at the skin mainly because this is a skin dominant image and I just want to bring that to a nice level. Somewhere about there works perfectly, um, but now our image is a little crushed so we're just gonna go back and adjust for that. Now that we've finished adjusting our exposure, I think the image is looking pretty good. Uh, I still notice that I've got quite an intense film grain going on. So we're gonna come down to film grain and by default, this is always enabled at 35 mil, which is pretty intense. Um, I personally like to use 65 mil, ISO 50. That just gives me nice results where I can still see the grain, but it's just not overbearing. Um, but you can go into custom up here and fine tune it yourself. Same with all of these other features here that I will talk about. Something that is really useful that I don't see too many people use is in the monitor section, you can create your own false color, which is really useful for when you're trying to expose correctly for skin tones. Um, that's a very useful tool. And we also have clipping indication, which I use quite a bit, 
which is just to make sure that we don't clip our blacks or our highlights and so that we can push them to the max of their range without actually losing any information. Gate weave, film breath and film damage. They are all products of film. Um, they're all incredibly accurate and work really well when I do use them. Um, and they're super customizable. You have all the different millimeters of film and each one of them has a custom mode where you can dial in exactly the creative look that you're going for. For this project, I won't be using them, but it's a really nice tool to have available. What I do use, however, nearly on every film I do grade is the Bloom Inhalation. 35 mil is sort of always seems to be the perfect subtle amount for me on each. Now we have a look that overall is really strong and that I'm, I'm very happy with. Basically everything done on the sort of color correction sort of base look is complete. And now anything that you want to do after this is very creative and just it's just based on the mood that you want to create or whatever color palette you're trying to lean into. And that's where these other two nodes over here help a lot. So our separation allows us to do some of that split toning. In this image, you sort of have the, the orange tones of the skin and we get this sort of bluish green tone in the highlights. So we could maybe lean into that more teal and orange look and something like the separation node is really good for that. Dehancer does have color boost under the film developer section, but I personally like to use the um, other saturation method that you can do within DaVinci Resolve. To do this, we're going to select the saturation node and we're going to right click and head down to color space. In color space, we're going to select HSV and we'll right click again and we're going to come down to our channels. We're going to disable the first channel and we're going to disable the third channel. Now I don't really understand the technicalities of why this works. Um, all I know is that it does work and it's been very effective and I've seen a lot of other YouTubers and other filmmakers use this method. Then you want to come down into your primary section and you want to use the gain to increase or decrease the saturation in your image. That looks nice to me. We're not going to add too much saturation because I always think less is more and we can always come back and add more if we want to. I've skipped ahead to the final result that I'm really happy with. Most of this has been done with all the foundations that I've just taught in this video. Um, the only thing I've done is just spent a bit more time adjusting the color and sort of pushing certain looks into my image. A couple extra bonus features are the use of power windows and isolating the skin tone, which I can show you down here. For this image, I really wanted to just highlight that light source coming from above and I wanted to create it, make it quite moody. So what I've done is I've added two power windows, one here coming from the left and right to sort of darken the sides of our image so that we're focused on this spotlight source. And then the one on the right is also just to brighten the, the overhead light as well. So when they're both combined together, you get a greater sense of contrast and dynamic range. Um, and it just brings a little bit more drama to the image. And once we've done that, this is the final result that we have. So now I'm going to quickly discuss the pros and the cons that I found whilst using Dehancer. And I think really the only con that I found is the price point. $449 is not a small amount of money. And I think there are a lot of people, young filmmakers out there who are reluctant to spend that much money on a plugin. But what I can say is that honestly, it is worth every penny of that. It offers you so much value because you can use this on professional paid projects and make that money back quickly. It also saves you so much time in the grading process. And at the end of the day, time is money. And if you use my promo code, Joe, you can get 10% off that price. And so if this tutorial was helpful and you want to buy Dehancer, that would really help me out if you use my code link in the description below. Whether you're a beginner colorist or a pro colorist, Dehancer offers you value on every single level. As a beginner colorist, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. It gets you accustomed to softwares like DaVinci Resolve, and it really simplifies that grading process and helps you fall in love with it instead of seeing it as a technical chore. If you're advanced, it has some of the most accurate and authentic film emulation tools possible. The halation, the bloom, and the grain. The grain especially uses such a good algorithm that it doesn't feel like a cheap overlay. 
all of these individual products of real film feel, feel so authentic because they're embedded in the video. This is not just a LUT. Some of the things that may not be talked about quite as much and the little things like say for example, the ability to export this as a monitoring LUT that I could use on this camera right here or the clipping indicators or the false color. I, I really could go on about all the tools that are available and how well thought out it is. It's not just for colorists, it's for filmmakers. The answer is now also available on iOS devices. What's so great about this is that it gives you such portability and convenience and it really doesn't sacrifice on many of the tools that it offers in its other plugins. To start, once you've imported your image, you have a bunch of different presets to choose from. A lot of these are really well picked. Um, as you can see, you have the film stock and the Dehancer team have paired it with their own custom settings and custom prints. So a lot of these are already really good straight off the bat and there's not much you need to do to tweak them. However, if you do want full flexibility, you can still go in and edit each individual setting. For this photo, I'm gonna pick Sinister 800T and Kodak Endura. And in the edit section, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. But just to summarize before I do that, we have all of the same settings and tabs that we have in the main plugin that I've showed. We've got our expand, print, color head, grain, halation, and so on. And it's really simple to use because all you have to do is simply tap to enable and tap again to disable each of the tools that you actually want applied to your image. So I'm gonna go and quickly expose this and just some of the adjust some of the color in the image using the histogram in the top left, and then I'll be back. Now that we've got our final look that I'm very happy with, here is the before and after. If this review was useful for you, or you have any feedback or any questions that you'd like answered, please leave them in the comments below and stick around because I'm gonna have more content like this and hopefully better and bigger videos. See you next time.